Welcome back, friends and neighbors. I put a community post up a few weeks ago of uh, some very interesting pictures of what appears to be an early air-cooled 250R. There's some other experimental models. So these pictures were sent to me by a guy. I don't, I don't necessarily want to express his identity, but uh, he was right in the thick of the three-wheeler things. And uh, he raced, and he was, uh, in some cases, better than most of the common names you know. He's the most famous three-wheeler racer you never heard of. Great guy to talk to, full of old war stories, lots of cool stuff. I could, I could spend hours talking to him and about him and reiterating everything that he's been through. But let's get down to brass tacks. So these pictures appear, if you look at the fenders, to show... My prototype. So, in following that wormhole, I did. Now, my investigative inquiry led me to find a thumb throttle with a kill switch, not a little blue wire, as is often the case how I shut it off. So, luckily enough, I had an 81 in stock. Put that on. That's one step in the right direction. Also, no front brake period. So here real shortly, that's going bye bye. Moving on, lower, I don't know what you call that, underslung exhaust pipe comes out that side. Now the reason it came out that side was because of this. That's a knee rest. When you're wailing that thing in the turn and just cleaning house and there's not a Kawasaki or Yamaha or Husqvarna or Mako or Kajiba or anything else even near you, you're really uh, leading the pack with your Honda. So, a lot of people ask, what is that? That is where, this right here, is where the knee brace used to be but probably the original pipe that went around the other side got smashed, wrecked, destroyed, rusted out, who knows what. So they went and put this production Bassani on, at which point they had to cut that off. In that case, I wouldn't argue if you said some kid and his dad cut that off, because that's probably accurate. Now, I had to use the stock throttle cable and this... 34 millimeter Kian PJ oval slide has a threaded top so it's kind of uh, just sitting there so you uh, crack the throttle you might get a wild ride I don't know and it's just at the edge of the throw there is no more adjustment I got this thing wound the whole way in and it's just just shutting the carb so that's troublesome but these have a brass threaded piece that goes in there, and that's what your 86s would have had. But in 81, the cable didn't accept the brass threaded piece because your 81 carb, which I happen to have a good example of, it's a little dark in there, but there's a lip on the cap, and the rubber seats down over the lip, and it holds everything in there nice and tight, and obviously the carburetor's way smaller, so you can have some... Free play on your throttle. You hear the, you can hear it shutting. So there's a little bit to be desired there. And then, you know, fancy kill switches and stuff, not little blue wires these days. I, uh, I had to do away with the old kill switch. You know, the, the good old days of touching it to the fork. That goes in the spare parts box, wherever that got to. What did I do with that? I'll find it later. Anyway, now what we have here, let's see. Just had it running yesterday. It should fire right up or make an idiot of me. There it is.
Boy, look at that's nice to have a factory kill switch. And then I'm no electrician, but I was being the wire guy here a little bit ago. Got, look at those nice happy little bullet terminals living together in harmony. Just happy little wiring. So now I got somewhat of a throttle set up. I got the cable, I got the wiring, got it hooked up down to carb. Let's go back to our pictures. Try to find some other things. Ah, uh, yes. Now there is a close-up. See, that's that side. See, there's a close-up there. Now I'm gonna try to get this. Get a good, good mental image of what that looks like, where it is. Uh, Right there is the fuel pet cock. Right there is the spark plug. Right here is the seat. Uh, this is a piece of velvet rope because don't touch my prototype. So now it's very faint. I'm going to try to put some light on it. And it shows up better in person. I wish everybody could come take a tour. How did that get so dirty? Right? Let me see if I turn the flash on. I know, everybody's going to bellyache and moan. I need a welding helmet to watch your video. Well, then don't freaking watch it. Right there. And then down. Doot, doot. It's shinier. I mean, I was sanding super lightly. Right here's the fuel pet cock. Right here's the spark plug. I think the original picture was taken like from a far angle. When you get in there, now let's do a do a close up side by side. I wish I was better with this kind of stuff. Let's look here. All right there's the two, and right there is where the two used to be. So I sanded that very lightly. Now the blue on top of the tank that you can see in this picture, it's not there. Now I assume that ran off when the gas got spilled on it, but I don't know. But that is too much of a coincidence to not be the same thing. And if you look very closely, you can see how uneven that is. And I mean, that's clearly a brush stroke right there. That's brush painted on. Now the fiberglass is chipping obviously and it looks like crap. But it's like that was painted on. I don't know how much of this is sticker, how much of it is paint. It looks all hand painted. Maybe it was stenciled and they painted inside the stencil with a brush. I don't know. But you can, you can catch it. So furthermore, let's go back to our pictures here. Oh, geez, we're having technical difficulties. There, we're back. Um, right here. Oh, let me turn the flash off. Now you don't need a welding helmet to watch my video. There's a sign right there. What does that say? Design experimental models? We don't know. This thing here is a bad-looking sand duner. Now, MRC was asking me if mine had a dirt bike engine. Mine doesn't. That is a dirt bike engine. It's a left foot kick, and this chrome is the front of the case. It doesn't hang out through the frame out here like a, a counterbalanced ATC type engine. So, go to the next one. That one we might be able to see. They chromed it. I mean, this stuff was neat stuff. Now that's the Baja Enduro. Now this is a flat track, and if you look, that's the gear shifter right there. They, they made a little bell crank for the shifter. The foot peg is way up above the exhaust pipe here. Zoom it out so you can see. That, too, is a dirt bike engine with the bigger cover. It's not the cereal bowl type cover like mine, and it's got a bolt. So, see here, I can get closer. Now, this one also, no front brake but it's got polished wheels. So let's go here. Here's what's crazy. This right here, this one here on the side is mine. See that boot? 
on the clutch lever. Does that give you chills or what? Obviously aftermarket lever and perch, but that boot never got changed. Um, standard shifter on mine. And it's an ATC engine because it hangs way out because it's counterbalanced. So this was probably a later pre-production pre piece where those other ones were earlier. And check this out. It's really hard to see. That is a clear fuel bowl. They knew what was up. Uh, what else? Oh, here. I zoom in. See the cereal bowl stator cover. You can see the radius of it. You can see the timing plug. Just like what I have. Now, I don't know how they made a brake pedal come up around that pipe, but they did. I need to find a standard 81 kicker, which shouldn't be any problem. I might actually have one here. And the brake pedal is going to be troublesome to find, and that exhaust pipe is going to be next to impossible. But I know what I got to take off, front brakes and front brake cable and a stupid twist throttle. Now, here's another one. Look in real close. Now, I know the neck isn't bolt on. We still haven't hashed that out yet. We don't know. Uh, this guy's looking for other, other and better pictures and more pictures. So the bolt-on neck is still the only anomaly. But these triple clamps are open through bolted with nuts and then no headlight holes. Open through bolted with a nut and no headlight holes. Now this is what goes underneath the little hood there in the frame. That little lug. But since that wasn't there because they cut the neck and did all this stuff, these things were drilled and bolted from the bottom. They actually touched the bolts back here. So we have made great strides in the progress of proving me. There's that, that rubber clutch handle cover. Boom, get you some of that. Now it almost looks like this handlebar is pulled down some, kind of like an ice oval snowmobile, how the left handlebar hangs down like a like a marathon Lance Armstrong type of bicycle. They have the swooping long handlebars, but I can't really, you know, the angles of the pictures are bad and whatever. So there's that. Uh, what else did I want to mention? Oh yeah, while I got you, this video is brought to you by Blue Line Graphics. BlueLineDecals.com for all your decal needs. Use the website, BlueLineDecals.com. It's uh, financially a better choice to go to that website over eBay. Uh, yeah. That is the stator cover. Dang, that's hard to see. I put up a community post with most of these pictures in it uh, about a month ago. Well, it was January 12th, I think, or 14th or something. Um, and there is the flat tracker one that also has the knee brace on it. So they were, uh, Honda was really showing off at this convention saying, you know, look at us. You want to race? We got every racing trim you need. Look at that shop. That's got a disc brake on the back. That one, one of these pictures. Uh, let's see which one. Yeah, you can just see the brake line coming in and the top of the caliper. So I got some work to do. Oh, I almost forgot what I do with my flashlight. Oh, there it is. The wheels are blue. Now it's hard to see on camera, but let's do this. What color is that peeking around that valve stem? Anybody? Anybody? And in the pictures, uh, this wheel hub is reflecting the 70s orange carpet, but it's chrome. This thing also has chrome wheel hubs. I'm almost 100% sure those pictures are of this machine. So... My testing pre-production R&D story is a little bit less likely now, but pre-production has gotten way more stronger. So it is definitely 
a pre-production without a doubt. But it was almost like a pre-production, you know, pre-production ice racer, pre-production sand dune, pre-production flat and circle track. So they had these things made during the development of the 81. So it may not have been used for testing, but it might have been sitting around the Honda in 82 or 83. And they were like, what can we do to make these things better? And they decided to start testing with this one. I don't know. But we got to find more pictures of that neck. And uh, and we'll keep you posted. But I figure with the blue and the wheels, the triple clamps the way they are, that remnant of a number two that was once there, the flywheel cover, uh, the rear brake setup, the knee guard that this thing had cut off. Uh, this is not the brake pedal that was on it. That one was much bigger. It came up probably almost to here, I would say. And they probably had a four or five inch block underneath this foot peg to get the foot peg above the exhaust. Oh, something else too. Ugh. This is difficult to do all this one handed. I need to hire a cameraman. Now that's not in the right place. But there's this nice little cut out here that probably was clearance for the exhaust. So, just when I thought this thing couldn't tell me anymore. Oh, and this. The uh, Honda used these little tabs with the little rubbers to hold the CDI boxes. Which this thing's a wiring nightmare. So let's go back in here. And... Uh, See if I can see it. Uh, maybe not this picture. Now you can't see it. I thought I could see. Well, this picture is a picture from the phone I'm currently recording with. So you're looking at a picture of a picture from a picture that was off of Facebook. So third or fourth re resolution is not so good. But uh, enough of me rambling. That's what we got. That's where we're at. I know everybody's been waiting for this video. Um, I feel like I should tell you more, but I don't have a lot more. But I do have a lot now, so we're doing good. At least I got that twist grip off of there. I got a real kill switch on it. And I just about have a full idea what it's supposed to look like. Now, I don't know if I'm going to repair this ugliness here and all of that fender cracking and have it redone. Or just try to patch, repair what's there and make it work. I don't know. If I could find a full set of the old school fiberglass, even if they were old Sundall fiberglass fenders, I'd get them and have them painted up exactly the way they're supposed to be. And then have the tank redone and make it look exactly as it does in those pictures. I have to have a pipe made. So this is getting more and more expensive. But now I have a direction. I have a roadmap. I know what I need to do. Oh, go back to the picture see i'm just here yammering not thinking see the front of the fender's blue the whole way around atc 250 uh, come on focus you it's hard to see but there is blue on the end of the fender so that tells me that there was some blue on it at one point now, I tried to sand through. I sanded through the red, hit the primer, and then hit red again. I don't know if they dyed the gel coat or resin or whatever, but that's my flashlight under there. You can't see it over here, but you can see it there. So there's nothing, no other colors under there. I was looking for the blue, um, but paint can be easily gotten rid of and easily changed. And like I said, with the parts on it that were hand painted and stuff, I don't know what kind of paint it was. You might have been able to wipe over it with a rag and gas and it'd be gone. So that's where we're at. That's where we're headed. Got to get that drum yanked off there because you know how we roll. All gas, no brakes. We'll see you.